So did the defense impress you in the spring game? Or were you left with the impression that it's just going to be more of the same in 2023? You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, fight on everyone. I'm your host, Mark Hulkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen. Every day, whether you're watching on YouTube or wherever you like to download your podcast, we are free. And I really do appreciate your support. If you're one of those who love to watch on YouTube and you haven't done it yet, become a subscriber. It's free. Just hit that subscribe button. And if you like the episode, make sure you hit that thumbs up because both of those mean a whole heck of a lot to the show. And to all of you who have already become a subscriber, what do I always do? I always like to say thank you very, very, very much. So, um, on yesterday's episode of Locked on USC, we come at you five times a week, I gave you my quick instant reaction from the spring game and didn't spend a whole lot of time uh, deep diving into any specific player, position, group, yada, yada, yada. But that's what we're going to do starting today and going forward until uh, we've pretty much exhausted as much as we can. what happened in the spring game. We'll break down the position, players. Uh, so we have a really good understanding of what we're looking at uh, with the transfer portal coming up, as well as uh, summer workouts, player uh, player run practices, and then eventually fall camp will be here. So as far as I'm concerned, I saw some stuff uh, on the defense that made, that made me feel a lot better uh, heading into year two. And I, I think most of you probably feel the same, uh, including um, up front along the defensive line. And that room, by the way, from what I'm being told, is going to be a lot better, um, especially if uh, Bear Alexander doesn't get lost on his way from Athens, Georgia to Los Angeles. That's going to happen. And that's pretty much a done deal. USC is picking up a big time missing piece to the puzzle uh, that's going to really improve this team right away. And look, if he's the if he if he's the right type of guy for the locker room, man, um, you you can see how important the transfer portal is and how it can help teams that are, you know, already playoff contenders or on the cusp. How it can maybe move them past the cusp and into a playoff team. Look, and how close is this to happening? I just saw on social media, one source out there tweeted out that a uh, bears, a uh, financial aid package at Georgia has already been cut off. So uh, you better find a home soon because the money has run out in Georgia. So like I said, this week and beyond, I'm going to dive uh, much deeper into the morass. You know, I thought, like I said, We're going to look at uh, any questions that were answered, uh, any questions that were raised, you know, that kind of stuff. And starting on this episode, I'm going to start on the defensive line, but uh, AKA I also include the rush end. They cross train defensive ends, rush ends. So they do play different roles, but uh, just so people don't confuse, there is a rush end and there is a defensive end. Right now, we're going to talk about the rush end, which has pretty much been a topic of consternation, not just with the fans. I know it's been troubling for uh, Alex Grinch, his defense, and you know Lincoln Riley, the head coach. You know everybody's been concerned that because it's been said that the rush end position is an integral part of the speed rush defense that Grinch likes to run, and you need to get high production from that area. You need to get into the backfield and create sacks, uh, create chaos in the backfield. And Tuli Tulia Pelotu is gone. He's not walking back through the door in Cardinal Gold to play in a game. So last year in the transfer portal, while Tuli was still at USC, uh, USC brought in uh, Romello Height from Auburn and Solomon Bird uh, from Wyoming. This year, 
in, through the transfer portal, USC added Jam Jamil Muhammad from Georgia State. Originally, was a quarterback at Vanderbilt. And they also brought in versatile Anthony Lucas uh, from Texas A&M, who can play with his hand in the dirt at defensive end or at that rush end position. Uh, so we'll see where he finally slots in or if he is going to be that two-league role where he can play either or. I, I think everyone agrees the Corey Foreman experiment at Russian is over. They've decided he's going to play with his hand in the dirt, defensive end. Ironically, he was playing Russian, or he, he was he was in the stand-up position a lot during the spring game on Saturday. So we'll see what's going on there. So here's who, what Roy Manning is working with right now. He's got Romello Height. Uh, Anthony Lucas, Jamil Muhammad, Solomon Bird, freshman Sam Green, and uh, Garrett Pomerantz, uh, preferred walk-on. That's what was available during the spring. Look, uh, Solomon Bird and Height didn't even part they didn't play in the game on Saturday. Neither have been a hundred percent available for contact throughout the spring as it is. And the last time we saw Romello playing a game was in the first half against Stanford. That was the second game of the year last year. Sam Green, uh, he played in the spring game. He showed that he can play. He got credited with a sack. Uh, he's got a couple more freshman friends that will be here soon, Braylon Shelby and David Peavy. So death will be increasing. But, you know, do you want to rely on freshmen? Uh, to be the guy to replace Tuli's production. Look, if they can get the job done, yes. But we don't know what we have with uh, with Braylon and with with PV until they get here. We know what they look like. They have the potential. Braylon really looks the part. So um, I guess good luck with with that. As far as hoping that the freshmen are going to be the answer. But like I said, at the top, it's been mentioned over and over that if the Russian position cannot produce, it's going to be Alex Grinch's defense is going to have a really difficult time being as effective, efficient, and as productive as they uh, as they want it to be. So if it's not a scheme thing, the speed defense, do they have the, the right pieces to make the thing work? You know, I guess that's the other question. You got to look at. If it's not the scheme and the coaches feel they're doing a good job of telling the guys where to be and what to do, then do they have the right pieces to make it work? Um, have injuries kept, you know, players like Romello Height from seizing that seizing the spot? He was a starter going into last season. So what is keeping USC from finding the right guys to take over that position? Um you know, the defensive ends and the rush ends, they, they cross train. You know, is that part of the issue that they can't or they, they won't settle on someone? Look, I know this is only year two, um, but if it's a, a high priority position, then that needs to be really high on that priority honeydew fix it list. Uh, because, look, we're already done with spring camp. We know we, we caught a glimpse. Of what we have to work with. I would say Sam Green was the best looking player of that bunch from the rush end position. Freshman. All right. So we're going to talk more about the defense uh, as the week goes on. Um, I haven't decided quite decided what position group I'm going to uh, go at next. Probably going to stay on the defensive line, though, for going into tomorrow's little hint, little tease going into the next episode of Locked on USC. But before that, we got a lot more to talk about on this episode. And before we get to that, we're going to talk about FanDuel. Grand slams, no hitters, double plays. They're back. Major League Baseball season. It's here. And there is no better place to get in on the Major League Baseball action than at FanDuel. America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers, you can step right up to the plate with a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to fanduel.com forward slash locked on to sign up. 
place your first bet, and you're going to get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. That's pretty cool. That's like literally betting on Dave Roberts to mess up a Dodger game, to mishandle the bullpen. He can figure it out. You can figure out how to use FanDuel. It's that easy. So don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to sign up because FanDuel is an official partner of Major League Baseball. I want to say thank you again for making Locked on USC your first listen every day. Hey, you everyday viewers, listeners, tomorrow on the show, as I mentioned just a moment ago, we're going to spend more time on the spring game, and we're going to break down the defensive line. We just got done doing the rush in in that previous segment. In this segment, uh, Houston, we have a problem. Yeah, I know. Really cliche. Probably use that line at least once on the show in the past. I look. It, it is the offensive line room has taken a couple of hits lately. <laughs> There's no way to sugarcoat this. You're all aware that Cortland Ford is in the transfer portal. Well, Ethan White, who USC brought in through the transfer portal, is not going to end up at USC. So hopefully uh, Houston can send us a Cameron Johnson. All right, look, I have been alluding to this potentially happening for weeks. I'm talking about the Ethan White, Ethan White situation. Some of you were upset uh, that I was being so vague. I'm sorry, but it's not my place to... Uh, tell everybody that a young man is deciding on whether or not he wants to play football anymore. But that's what happened on Monday afternoon. Word got out that Ethan White, that the, the massive offensive guard uh, transfer from University of Florida, who everyone was anticipating stepping in and replacing uh, Andrew Voorhees. Well, he, he's not coming to USC. And it has nothing to do with academics, as some have rumored, as I just alluded to. Look, the, the human body can only take so much physical pounding. He's a big young man. And playing offensive line, <laughs> it's not just the, the physical repetitions of going up some of a defensive line against you. Every time you hit the ground and piles of weight land on top of you, Talking about sometimes close to a ton, <laughs> it hurts. I don't know from personal experience, but I can only imagine it doesn't feel good. Anyway, so USC has a lot of nice pieces in the offensive line room, but the problem is, um, which way is, is Josh Henson going to assemble his Lego pieces? On Saturday, this was your starting five. You had Michael Tarquin at left tackle. He was one of the transfers from Florida. You had Gino Quinones at left guard, Justin Dietrich at center, Jared Kingston at right guard, and Jonah Monheim slid out to right tackle. Behind them on Saturday, you had Elijah Page, got a lot of time at left tackle, uh, Andrew Malek, a lot of time at left guard. I believe it was Killian O'Connor uh, who got a lot of time playing back at center. Andres DeWork and Mason Murphy on the right side. So I should have known that uh, Killian O'Connor was going to be getting some playing time during the spring game. I saw him on Thursday. I, he had the half shirt going. The guys were wearing you know, their jerseys, pads, and full uniform for their last practice. Thursday before the spring game, but he had the half trick going. He was proud of his belly. So, anyways, that should have been my sign that Killian knew he was playing. Um, he's always usually one of the last guys off the field, too, after practice. So, he's one of those workhorse guys, blue collar guys. You're gonna, you might be seeing a lot of this year. Who knows? 
But all of a sudden, um, it might appear like there, there could be some depth issues in the offensive line room. And, uh, you know, Cortland Ford's portal entry obviously didn't help. I, I don't think – I knew for quite a while that this was happening. Um, but I think it caught the staff off guard. And before anyone asks, no chance. He's not coming back. Not happening. Let me put it this way. 99.8% chance it's not going to happen. It would take a pretty sizable NIL package to have Cortland give a double take. I already know who the final three contestants are, where Cortland's going to eventually end up. I can tell you this. One of them is going to be, uh, well, two of them, two of them are in the SEC. He'll be taking a trip this weekend to one of those schools. So if I get permission, I'll let you know. I might have mentioned the name in the past, so go check it out. Uh, but University of Houston, Cameron Johnson, he is in the transfer portal. He is a massive, massive dude. And he's going to be taking his official visit to USA. He's already been to Missouri. And the Houston, he's a fifth-year uh, player from the University of Houston. He he could be a good fit for the Trojans at one of those guard spots. I'm predicting it's going to be left guard. But either way, um, he announced when he entered, he jumped in the portal back in March, back in March, I believe it was March 8th. And now he's going to be making his official visit to USC on April 21st. He was quoted as saying, uh, they, USC, have a lot to offer, especially coming off of their last season, uh, Johnson told We RSC Sunday morning, WeRSC.com. That's where you can find me when you can't find me here at Locked on USC. Quote, they have some momentum going into this year that's very exciting and something I'm excited to see, end quote. I would have to imagine that uh, Cameron realizes that blocking for Caleb Williams and playing for a chance at a championship probably outweighs following his position coach from Houston to Missouri, where he's already official visited. Uh, I, I believe his old uh, offensive line coach is taking a step up to Missouri. And while no one really has any of the, the, the details yet of why he's leaving Houston, uh, Johnson did say that it was a personal decision. Uh, he just, quote, I sitting down with my family and seeing how I can improve myself, I feel like I've kind of reached my ceiling at Houston. For me to take that next step and improve myself, this is what I needed to do. Well, let me translate that. I'm going to kind of read the tea leaves in front of me. I don't know the young man. I think he knows that he's probably one year away from wanting to play in the NFL. And playing in the spotlight at USC for a national championship, possibly, is a really good way to increase your visibility. And USC's NIL collective, House of Victory, was built exactly. This, this is what the purpose is for players like this. And... Uh, and there's probably another guy out there that USC might have some interest in as well. So we'll see. Uh, one of those guys is, and I've got my feelers out just to make sure, because Josh Henson knows him, comes from Texas A&M, Matthew Wyckoff. Uh, he can play offensive tackle. So we'll see. But as I mentioned, uh, offensive line room, there's a lot of pieces to work with, a lot of elite talent. I'm still trying to decide if by the time you get to the end of fall camp, you'll have enough confidence in Elijah Page, who looks the part. Um, I, I I think it was Greg Katz on the Inside the Trojan Huddle podcast that I do weekly, uh, or maybe it was Eric McKinney, I don't know, one of the two, um, said that he reminds them, he, he reminds them of uh, you, former USC offensive lineman Keith Van Horn, similar body frame, tall, broad shoulder, 
uh, just long torso. He looks like your prototypical offensive tackle. That's a good sign. Um, and again, he's already, what, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, 300 pounds. You figure naturally and just continuing to work in the weight room, he's going to add size. Caleb Williams can move. We know that. I, I just don't want him to have to move a lot unnecessarily. So, again, do you have enough confidence in Elijah Page? Can Mason Murphy seize the position? He was given the opportunity last year. I think with Mason, it's just a matter of consistency in making sure um, he, mentally he's into the game. And Saturday, he had a couple of uh, uh, illegal procedure penalties. I'm saying, you know, patting himself up, not patting, smacking himself on his helmet on the second one. He, he gets frustrated with himself. He knows he's making mistakes and the coaches are watching and looking for who they can trust. That's what spring's all about. Who can play and how are they going to use them come fall? So there was a lot of freshmen who were there in the spring and they are showing that they can play. How much? We'll find out. Like I said, we've got a sample size. We'll see what they can do uh, when the lights really come on and when there's more than uh, 25,000 Trojan fans in half the stadium rooting them on. I guess this, what I'm saying is Lincoln Riley has said the transfer portal, USC is going to be active in the transfer portal uh, once spring, spring camp is over. Well, you could put an exclamation point on that uh, on on Lincoln Riley's statement. He said that more than once. Like I said, whether or not Cortland Ford jumping in Cortland Ford jumping into the transfer portal caught them off guard. I I think they they might have known something was up, but it probably didn't really smack them in the face until the end of spring camp. That's when Lincoln Riley and Cortland Ford had their face to face. That's when the news broke the last week of camp. So, and now we found out, we're finding out that Ethan White uh, is not going to be available or is more than likely is not going to be a USC Trojan. And it's physically, he's just, he's not going to be able to do it. At least that's what we're being told. Um, I guess, I'm sorry. I I wanted to let people know sooner, but when your sources ask you to keep things quiet and you weigh the situation, you keep things quiet. So there you go. I do have some good news though. That's coming up in the next segment. Speaking of good news, I'll get to that in a moment. I do have to, let me just finish off the uh, not so good news. I got some recruiting updates for you and let's just get it out of the way. It's not going to be Nebraska and it's not going to be USC either, but apparently Dylan Raiola, number one player and number one quarterback in the class of 2024, he's decided he's going to choose the university of Georgia and apparently really soon, like perhaps this week soon, he's going to make his commitment. Uh, I don't know what sped up his process. I, I Everyone thought he was going to wait until June, you know, take some trips, make sure he had all of his, you know, ducks in a row, eyes crossed, excuse me, eyes dotted, T's crossed. Apparently, Georgia made an offer he couldn't refuse. Um, apparently, he wants to play for a national championship, and he feels that's the best place for him. It's a good place. I'm not going to argue that. However, um, you could probably do that in Los Angeles. Also, I would think with your uh, with your buddy Deuce Robinson. I know they're not going to be playing football with each other this year, but they could next year. Oh well. Look, I just hope uh, this is his final choice because decommitting a second time would be a really bad look 
All right, so there it is. Lincoln Riley is going to have to look for another quarterback if he's going to even take one in the class of 24. Maybe he takes a transfer. Might be the right time. Remember, he brought Malachi Nelson in with the 2023 class. Let's get to some good recruiting news. How about uh, local cornerback Dakota Fields? USC is starting to line up their official visits. And they're starting to line up their June official visits. June is when uh, they're going to really kind of focus their energies on their high priority guys. It worked last year. They're going to follow. Uh, they're going to follow the same script. Dakota plans to take his official visit uh, June second through the fourth. The number ten ranked cornerback, who has been. Look, he's been a constant at USC spring camp throughout the 15 practices. He was also at the spring game. Um, he's going to be joining uh, Zabian Brown, Kingston uh, Vialamu uh, Asa, and Taylor Tatum. They're also going to take their official visits that weekend. And then last year, on the weekend of June 16th through the 19th, that was their, you know, their big June bash. USC hosted 25 official visitors, and they signed 14 of them. That's a pretty good return on an investment. I am not at liberty to say how much they spent on that weekend, but uh, they spent a lot of money that weekend on recruiting. Okay, okay you got it. Use it right. This year, so far, signed up for the Big June Bash, which is scheduled for June 16th through the 18th. There were six uh, official visitors already committed before Xavier Jordan, wide receiver from Sierra Canyon, decided to sign up for that weekend. That's when he'll be taking his official visit. He's joining linebacker Ty Anthony Smith, wide receiver Mike Matthews, running back Byron Jackson, excuse me, Brian Jackson, Running back, Nathaniel Palmer. Edge rusher, Darian Mayo. And then uh, uh, two edge rushers, actually. Jalen Harvey is also going to be there. Cornerback, Xavier Brown. And running back, Taylor Tatum. So um, pretty good stuff coming up. And then back on April 8th, when Xavier Jordan uh, was at USC, he said, I believe that was an unofficial visit. Uh, he said, the, quote, the visit was tremendous. It was an incredible visit. The stadium, he had a chance to check it out. He said it was amazing. And the one-on-one -on -one time was magnificent. And me, being from Southern California, just made everything a plus. So the whole get down was amazing. I like that, the whole get down. And he's just one of a, uh, a loaded wide receiver class in 2024 from California. You know, you've already heard you've heard names Ryan Pelham, Jordan Anderson, add Xavier um, Xavier Jordan's name to the list. Uh, he is he's been climbing the recruiting rankings uh, for those of you who follow that stuff. He's a really good player. I got a question for you before we get out of here for this episode. Have you heard that? Uh, speaking of unlimited, uh, speaking of official visits, unlimited official visits are going to be. Something that everyone's going to have to kind of keep their eye on because the NCAA has made a ruling that schools can offer as many official visits as they want, or at least recruits can take as many official visits as they want before they were limited to five. Well, here's the thing. Remember, schools will still have to authorize these official visits. So is that going to make offers more precious in the future? Will schools be as loosey-goosey giving offers? Uh, and here's where I'm, 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 you'll understand where I'm going with this. Look, I understand the intent behind um, this new rule of allowing recruits to take unlimited official visits. It's to help families who can't afford to take as many unlimited unofficial visits. However, you know, here's the big but where I'm going to kind of contradict while I understand the intent, why I think there, there's some good behind it. It's not like 
USC and other schools are going to have a sign-up sheet for these kids to take field trips. You know, there's, I don't know, some schools will, you know, give false hope to some recruits and they're just going to pay for official visits left and right. I don't know if that's a good thing. So, like I said, something to keep an eye on. I don't know which direction this can go. All I know is that, uh, you know, if I'm a recruit and Hawaii's and Hawaii is recruiting me, I know where one of my official visits going. So a school like Hawaii, they're going to have to be really judicious um, with who they hand out offers to, because they're going to have a line waiting for their official visit. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. Um, look, once again, thank you for making Locked on USC your first listen every day. I'm going to be talking about the spring game, position groups, players throughout the week. So make sure you're checking out Locked on USC every day this week. And when you're done making USC Locked on USC your first listen, then you can head on over to WeRC.com because that's where I'm going to be giving you a lot of written content. And that's where you're going to get a lot of recruiting VIP stuff. And eventually I'm up here too. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.